This is the UJK Angle Drill Guide, and this is the Woodpecker's Auto Angle Drill Guide. Head tech comparison coming up. I bought the UJK drill guide with my own money as an investment in the workshop because I wanted one. I don't have the room for a big pillar drill, but I do want to do accuracy in my angles and the UJK stuck me as a good device. I did a full review of this one here. And on the back of that video, a few people got in touch and said, hey Andy, how does the UJK one compare with the Woodpeckers one? Not got a clue, I said. I don't have the Woodpeckers, never seen it, never used it. Now, Julian in the community got in touch and said, Hey, Andy, I have the Woodpeckers Auto Angle Drill Guide. If you want, I'll ship it down to you. You can borrow it and you can do a head to head comparison with the UJK to see what we think. And that's what we're going to do today. So, a huge thank you to Julian for lending me this incredibly expensive, gorgeous device so we can make this video. It's really, really appreciated and I'm sure it'll add value into our community as well. I did do an unboxing and a deep dive review of the Woodpeckers one as well. And if you want to see that video, check out this link. But today we're not going to do a deep dive review. We've done that. We're not going to do that. No unboxing, no deep dive review, no putting these things through the paces. Go and watch those videos if you want to see that type of content. I just want to compare these today and have a look at them and see what we think. So I want to start off by looking at the quality of these two devices and just having a chat around that. I then want to look at the specifications because on paper they're sort of similar, so let's look at the specifications. I then want to look at the functionality, how those specifications have been realised on the devices themselves and that's where these things really do start to differ. And then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. Now I'm not even going to try and make a recommendation between these two devices. The point of the video is to give you information if you're looking at these and saying which one should I go for. So with that said, let's get started. Now just before we get into the quality conversation, let's just quickly touch on the price point. Now the prices I'm going to touch on here don't include any tax, nor do they include any shipping fees, and nor do they include any import duties. And that's because this one is made and shipped from the US, and this one is made and shipped from the UK or is available across the Axminster stores who are actually the owner and the manufacturer of the UJK brand. So it doesn't make sense to talk about weird taxations or import laws or import duties or different shipping fees. But we'll talk about the base price excluding all of those things and that should give us a good comparison point for the quality conversation. Are you ready for this? The UJK comes in at 145 pound and 82 pence, which is round about 184 dollars and 82 cents. The woodpecker comes in at 599 dollars and 99 cents, which is round about 470 pounds and 73 pence. 145 pound, 470 pound, 184 dollars. $599. So there's a significant difference in these. Now this is January 2024, so I'm using British pounds to US dollars conversion right in January and the price points taken directly from their, from their websites as well. So in real terms, the Woodpecker is about three times the price of the UJK ones. Let's talk about the quality. Both of these are actually very, very similar in overall quality. They both have a aluminium cast base. This one's got a slightly rougher texture on it and this one's quite smooth, neither here nor there, just for to point that out to you. Both the shafts are steel, these are anodized black steel and these are obviously clear steel, but they are both steel in nature. The heads are aluminium, and the mounts into the base itself are also heavy duty cast aluminium. The adjustment knobs on the woodpeckers are also aluminium, where the adjustment knobs on the UJK are actually plastic. This one's quite a hard plastic, and this one's got a rubberized coat on it, but they are still plastic in nature. The bearing inside are very, very similar. They're a self lubricating bearing. The UJK seems to run freer than the, uh, the woodpeckers, but I don't really think that's here nor there. Both chucks have a steel shaft on them, and both of the chucks themselves are the key driven chuck type, whatever you call that. In terms of weight, they are both substantial beasts. This one is heavier, significantly heavier than this one in your hand, 
Now that's not a problem and in this type of device it's actually an advantage because this gives me more stability on the woodpeckers than I'm going to get on the UJK. All of these have holes in these bases to allow you to clamp that down if required to give you additional stability. Now if I had to make a choice here, I think the Woodpeckers one is a higher quality device than the UJK one. It doesn't mean the UJK is a poor quality one, it's a beautiful device. And when you take it out and use it, it feels like a quality device as well. But when you compare these side to side, the additional weight and the aluminium handles and that bit of stability on the base, I think the Woodpeckers does feel like a higher quality product than the UJK. But that's very, very subjective. Of course. Let's have a quick look now at the specifications between these two. Now both of these will tip in terms of an angle. The woodpecker goes from 90 degrees and it'll go all the way down to an angle of 40 degrees. The UJK one will go all the way through to 60 degrees. So you get a much steeper angle on the UJK than you do on the woodpeckers. What I would say, this large base here, and this is where it comes into its own, this is still incredibly stable in that position, where the UJK one tips in in that position. But the UJK one will tip in both directions. Not sure if that's much value in practical uses, but it will also go from 0 to 60 in this direction as well. Now these have different chucks. This is a 10 millimeter chuck, which is about a 3 8 of an inch chuck. This is a half inch chuck. So this will take a half inch shaft and that's roughly about 12.7 millimetres as a comparison point. The maximum travel is that the UJK will give you a maximum plunge depth of 210 millimetres without the depth stops on this one. And the woodpeckers will come down 194 millimetres. That's about 8 and 34 127 of an inch on the UJK and it's 7 and 5 eighths inch plunge on the woodpeckers. Now in practice again do you care because typically this would sit on top of your stock and you're drilling down through these open apertures that both devices actually have. So it may give you some advantages on a length of a bit but having said that when you're looking at 194 millimeters, 75 eighths of an inch on this one anyway, bits aren't going to be that long. So I don't really think in use it's that important. Now where that distance may come into play for you is if you're doing a lot of drilling into dowels because on the UJK the dowel sits on top here and if you're going to have a wide dowel like a very thick meaty chair leg for example that distance might become important to you. Now although I don't like the design of this on the woodpecker the actual dowel device sits underneath so once again that distance is what that distance is. Now both of these have depth stops, the Woodpecker one has a single depth stop here and the UJK one has two depth stops, one on either side. Now you may think that that's an advantage, but the Woodpecker one has a trick up its sleeve. This steel shaft here is actually tapered, it's flat on this side here and that starts from a narrow position here and it tapers out to a fat position here. So when this is locked into position and you lock onto the flat face, the more pressure you put on that the tighter that clamping force becomes because obviously the shaft is getting wider in effect. So that is a very, very stable, secure design. Whereas on the UJK, you position the stop that you want, bring the second one in, and therefore that's using a double clamping mechanism. This one's using a single on a taper. This is just a round shaft, and therefore you have that stop. In practice, both of these work incredibly well, so I don't think there's any distinct advantage between either of them. Now where you do get a distinct advantage is on this, on the woodpeckers. Now the woodpeckers has got a spring here. You can see as I start to reduce the spring, you can see the spring is returning that to the top of the shaft, where on the UJK, it's not. Now as I pull the spring down on this one, what's the chuck carriage? You see how that goes down slowly and gracefully? and compare that to the UJK, it goes down pretty quick and heavy. So although they've both got brass self-lubricating bearings against the steel rod inside here, the fit and finish of the woodpeckers is far superior. And you can tell that just by the slow, beautiful action on that chuck, as opposed to the sort of kind of whatever that action is here on the UJK. So that's a much better fit and finish when you start to look at the machining of those brass bearings against these steel shafts here. And obviously this doesn't have a spring of any type, so there's no self-return 
on that carriage. Both of these have hex drives on the shafts themselves. The UJK one is a Centronics drive and the one on the Woodpeckers is not Centronic. Now both of these will obviously work with a standard Jacobs chuck. And look at that, even with the weight of that rather heavy festival drill on it, it's, there's enough tension in that spring to return that carriage up, which is really nice, so it's not compressing it down. And that makes it very easy to work with in practice. Obviously the Jacobs chuck will also work on the UJK. And obviously it's the depth stops here that's stopping it banging down to the bottom. But taking the depth off, you can see that really starts to get a bit clunky as it finds its way to the bottom of the drill. What I do like about the UJK is the Centronics chuck, so that makes it incredibly easy just to drop your drill onto there, not messing around at all with the um, Jacobs chuck. I do prefer the Centronic mechanism on the UJK than the hex drive here on the woodpeckers. And obviously, just to prove the point, that's not gonna clip on there in any way, shape or form. Now most cordless drills do have a hex drive inside the head here and the Festool is no exception and therefore it will work without the Centronics. Not quite as stable I find, I prefer the Centronics that's gripping further down the shaft but that will happily go on there. Now I do find that the hex drive here on the Festool is a bit tight on the hex drive here on the Woodpeckers. Centronics is slightly narrower than standard and although it will go on it can be a bit of a bind to, to get off. So I don't like using the hex drive on the woodpeckers in any way, shape or form. And I would always be using a Jacobs strike chuck on that particular device. So in terms of the attachments of your drill, my preference, my go-to is most definitely the Centronic system here on the UKJ. But if you're not a Festool user, then that probably makes no difference whatsoever in your life. Now both of these devices do have these rubberized pads on the bottom that gives you a little bit of grip onto your product. This is really, really firmly attached here on the woodpeckers. Now on the UJK one, the aluminium base here is actually hollow. And you can sort of kind of see that this is loose. It doesn't affect me in practice, but this is really solid. This is a solid piece of aluminium, hence the weight differential. This is a hollow molded piece of aluminium with ridges in it for strength, but they do both have these rubber, rubber max. But once again, I much prefer the quality and the fit and finish here on the Woodpecker's device. Now, both of these devices take centering pins and there's these holes here on the Woodpecker's and there's these various different holes on the UJK. Now on the UJK, your sensing pins are stored here in the aluminium head and it's simply a screwdriver to take those off and they simply locate here in the centering holes and then you can put your device on a piece of stock, twist it so those pins come in place and you're now drilling directly to the centre of the stock. And I do like the fact that these sensing pins are easy to get access to because they're stored inside this head here. And I'm never a lover of things that don't store with a device because you know one thing will happen and that one thing is that that will get lost. Similarly, on the woodpeckers, you've got these two devices here. Now this is a neat trick on the woodpeckers because hiding away inside these knurled knobs are these small allen keys here that fit pretty much all the moving parts of the woodpecker's device including these aluminium centering pins on the bottom here. Now on the woodpeckers the centering pins are actually two parts. There's a centering pin and then there's also a nut here and these mount into these holes here at the bottom. You put your centering pin into one of the holes then come through from the top with your nut or your screw sorry lock that into place, similarly on this one down here. And now again, you put that onto your stock, twist till your pin's engaged, and you're drilling down into the center of the piece of the stock. So these do work on the woodpecker, and obviously they're stored on device, but I do find them messy in terms of having to take them out of the back of this aluminium plate, separate the two pieces, put them in, then tighten down these, these bolts here. So I do find it messy on the woodpeckers to do that, and I much prefer the simplicity of the UJK device with just these single pins that are stored in the device that just screw on to the bottom. 
Now both of these will allow you to work with dowels for chair legs and we saw this a little bit earlier on. The UJK solution is quite simple and elegant. You've just got these little valleys here that are moulded in to this casting at the bottom. And that just simply holds your stock centrally allowing you to then just drill down right, right into the centre and that's guaranteed to be lined up and centred every single time. And it's foolproof and as long as your stock fits in between here it sits on the top there. But it is limited to this distance here. This distance is around about 70 millimetres so it's a big piece of stock you can get inside here but it is limited by that. Now the woodpeckers do take a slightly different stance and approach again and it's using these same pins and I'm nowhere near a lover of this design. You've got to make sure that these pins here line up with each other and again it gives you that same valley type concept and once you've got those aligned they then sit on top of your stock so your stock is resting underneath the plate so you don't have the same restrictions in terms of stock width that we had on the UJK device but this isn't firm you've got to find some sort of way probably two more bits of the same diameter of dowel either side of this one to stop it rocking about. The other thing I don't like about this design, if they're not in line, your stock won't fit smoothly. It'll be twisted off in some way, shape or form that will take away your accuracy. So you've got to make sure that these are lined up before you tighten down. And then you've got to find some sort of clamping solution to stop this thing rocking back in two. So I much prefer both the dowel solution and the centering pin solution that we have on the UJK rather than the one that we have here on the woodpeckers it does feel a little bit of an afterthought um, but hey it is what it is and that's how they've designed that now that's pretty much it for the sort of features and the specifications on the UJK but the woodpeckers one does go a little bit further so coming in the standard kit you also have this rather nice fence and that fence can mount in a number of different planes it can mount on this front plane the side planes or even the back plane and that simply bolts on and in the end of these again you've got that same hex driver that is are these knurled knobs at the top so it's quite easy to quickly drop these guides in and then you've got a fence that you can use as additional support when you're drilling or to give you repeatable guidelines by bringing that to a reference point of your material. And we did look at this fence in the unboxing and the deep dive review video. So go and look at that video if you want to know about the versatility of that fence. But that comes with the standard kit. Now both devices have witness marks. You can see these white lines here on the UJK. Now interestingly on the UJK it only has witness marks in the centre. There's no witness marks on this dimension whatsoever. So although you can line up quite happily to a centre line, you can't line up in this direction. It always struck me as a strange, strange thing. So on this one, you're still going to be bringing down your drill bit to try and make sure you're lined up where you wanted it to be. And for the sake of a couple of witness marks on the inside faces, that seems stupid to me as an oversight. Whereas the Woodpecker's one has witness marks. It has these very, very small cutouts here that give you a centre line. And equally, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one on the back. So if I wanted to drill there, I can quickly line up on those marks and on those marks. And then I know exactly where my drill is going to go. So the witness marks on this one are far superior to the witness marks on this one and it also means a strange omission that UJK just didn't put a couple of witness marks on the inside here the same way they've done on this on this axis strange now the big difference between these two devices is how they've engineered their angle on the UJK it pivots here on this central point at the bottom and on the woodpeckers it's got this double cam system here as I change the angle the drill bit is always in exactly the same position or the, the drill point is in exactly the same position so no matter what the angle it's always going to enter the stock at the same point and that means that your witness marks on here in this direction are always valid so if I line up my witness marks onto a line it doesn't matter what angle I come at the drill bit always enters the stock at exactly the same point lined up on those witness marks and that makes it super simple and super accurate to use. 
Whereas if you look at the drill on the UJK, the drill is always going to point at a different place depending on the angle. The end of the drill bit is actually making an arc across, across the stock. You can see that the drill bit always makes an arc in that hole. So the woodpecker one stays in the same position at the end of the drill bit where the UJK and every other device on the market, to be fair, makes an arc. So if you wanted to light up that center point, it's incredibly hard, which is probably why they've not put the witness marks in it, to be fair. So the angle mechanism here on the woodpeckers is far superior to anything else on the market, including the UJK one. Now in terms of accessories, the woodpecker ones has more of these tight fences. It has some stop flags also mounting to the base, and that gives you repeatability both in the horizontal and the, ver the vertical plane, which really is very, very useful. Now, this one doesn't have any of those fences or any of those stop flag functionality available as an accessory. And similarly, there's no way of mounting one of this because there's nothing drilled in to the base. And with this being a hollow base, you probably could drill in, but there's not much substance to this base. It is hollow inside. So I'm not really sure how much mileage you would get out of that modification. I probably wouldn't bother. You can get around the lack of fences, of course, by using a piece of reference stock clamped to your material, and then you get repeatability. But it is nice to see that built in here. Now, one accessory that this does have, that this doesn't have, is a clamp. And you can buy a small clamp. It's a really well-engineered clamp that sits in the middle here, mounting into these, into these brackets. And that will hold any piece of stock vertically, perfectly centered to the chuck, allowing you to drill down inside which is great for drilling the center of dowels or great for drilling a pen stock as a prime example of that use. This has nothing like that in terms of the accessories. So let's summarize what we've just learned and have some final thoughts. Although the specifications on these two devices are very, very similar on paper, the way they've engineered those specifications to turn it into functionality is very, very, very different. You cannot get away from the fact the way they've engineered the angle on this one is far superior to anything on the market and it blows the UJK device away. But I do think they've compromised some of the other designs. The way these works in terms of the dowel, in terms of the center point, it's fiddly, it's a little bit messy, and I much prefer the solution on the UJK. Now, because I'm a Festival user, I love the Centronix device on here, not a lover of the hex drive on here, and I find using the Jacob Chuck a bit messy. The engineering, the fit and finish, I think the Woodpeckers is far superior to the UJK in terms of engineering and fit and finish. It's got a solid base on it, it's got a hollow base on it. It's got a big heavy base on it that's very, very stable. It's got a lighter base that's not overly stable. I like the spring on this one, the return mechanism is great and the functionality of the head on the steel bars is great. This one feels clunky by comparison when you, when you use the two of them. The UJK one does feel Clunky. Now, as always, if any tool, the one that you choose is based on your use case. If you're predominantly working on a flat surface and you want a lot of angles or a lot of precision in that angle drilling, the Woodpecker's one is, is, is awesome. It's just going to do the job in a way that's really, really going to be exciting to you. However, if you're going to drill into dowels, you're going to get frustrated by the way they've solved their dowel holding situation on the, the Woodpecker's one, and you're going to have to build some sort of stabilization device. Once you've got that, I think it'll work okay. Whereas the UJK, super, super simple, bang the dowel on and you're ready to go. No messing about. I can't argue at all, this Woodpecker device is absolutely beautiful. It's such a solid device. But you can't get away from the elephant in the room that it's three times the price of the UJK one. This is a nice device, it's a quality device, and if you've never seen the Woodpecker's devices, you'd be really, really happy with this inside your workshop. It's gonna do a great job for you, it's gonna last for many, many years. It's a good, solid, robust, accurate device. But the quality of this one, by God, it's a sexy piece of kit. So I hope you found this useful. It was nothing more than a comparison if you were looking at these two uh, devices. And just out of interest, I also have the smaller Woodpecker's drill guide here, and I'm going to look at that in the next video. Thanks for watching, take care in the workshop, and I'll see you next time on The Woodcrafter. Crafter.